In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use a multimeter. A multimeter is called that because it me measures multiple things. A multimeter typically measures voltage. You'll see that here with the V symbols. It measures resistance. You'll see the ohms symbol representing the resistance measurement. And then it measures current. And that's represented here by the A for amps. And so I'm going to just briefly show you how to use these measurements in a very simple way. This multimeter is a very powerful tool. It's quick and easy to use. It takes accurate measurements. And it's essential to diagnosing or testing any electrical circuit to find out why it's not functioning properly. And there are times when you'll need to use each of those three measurements, the volts, the resistance, and the current. So we'll start with voltage. You'll see that we have two, two voltage options here. If you look closely, we've got a V with a, looks like a squiggle above it. That represents alternating current. And then the other V has the solid and dashed line above it. And that's direct current. And anytime you're dealing with a battery, you're dealing with direct current. Alternating current typically is something that comes from a generator. If you're going to be measuring the, the voltage that's uh, present at the outlet on your wall, for example, or the lights in your home, that's alternating current. It comes from a generator at the power plant. But anything else that deals with a battery would be direct current. So we'll, we're going to be using direct current. As we turn it on, it reads roughly zero volts. It's going to jump around just a little bit because of stray voltage in the air. Um, one way to make sure that it's measuring correctly is to bring the leads up here and, and touch them together and it should read zero volts. It should go to zero. And really what it's doing is it's measuring a difference in voltage or a difference in pressure between these two leads, your positive and negative leads. So for example, I'm going to zoom out and bring this battery over here. And if you look closely at the battery, it's got a positive and negative side and it's got a voltage or pressure difference. Voltage is electrical pressure. And so on one side we have zero volts and on the other side we have 12 volts on this battery. At least we should. And that's a pressure difference. And that's what causes, when we complete the circuit with the wire, that's what causes current to flow or electrons to flow between one, from one side to the other is there's a pressure difference. When I put the leads together, there's no pressure difference at all between the two leads, and so we read zero volts. If I put the two leads on the positive side, I've got 12 volts and 12 volts, again, for zero volts difference. But if I go across the battery like this, says that there are 12.54 volts difference between these two points. And that's enough to cause current to flow if we were to make a path for that. Does that make sense? So an example of the, how we'd use this, so I've got a couple of wires here. If I connect these wires to the battery, I now should have a voltage difference on these two wires. If I connect them directly to each other, it's going to have no resistance in the circuit and it will melt the wires. But if I use a resistor, get a resistor here, or a light bulb, we'll start with the light bulb. If I just connect this, these wires to the light bulb, it should cause the light bulb to light up and see that it does. And Really, if I wanted to use my multimeter, I should be able to also come and measure voltage right here and here at this light bulb and find out that there should still be close to 12.5 volts here. I shouldn't lose any in the wires. All 12.5 volts should get to the light bulb, and that's what makes it work well. So resistor does the same thing. Other than it doesn't light up, a resistor is, is still resistance in the circuit. So if we connect one of these leads to one terminal on the resistor, other lead to the other terminal. Now the resistor may get a little bit warm, just like the light bulb got warm when it was on. It's, it's warm. So be careful. Don't burn yourself. I can come to the battery again and touch, and I should still have 12.25 volts at this point. And that may be partially because the battery's draining as current is flowing, and also just because the battery's loaded now, as we've got a, a, it's got to supply current to the circuit. 
I come directly to this resistor and I touch it, it should still read 12 point, should be the same thing, right? Up here we had 12.25. It should be about 12.25, but we'll find out it's not 12.09. So really we've lost about 0.16 volts. Not a lot, but we've lost just a little bit of, of voltage. And that means we've lost it somewhere between these wires. So I could check this yellow wire on the positive side. Give me a little bit of loss here. It says I've lost 0 0.012, so there's that accounts for 0 0.01, or one of the one of the 16 hundredths of a volt that's missing. Or must be missing about 15 on the on the green wire. So if we come over here. Sure enough, it's close. About 0.14 volts difference from one end of the green wire to the other, so that, that green wire is actually causing a small voltage loss, but it's not a lot. It'd be similar to a kinked hose. If you had a garden hose and it was kinked, you'd be losing some pressure because it was kinked. But anyway, that's how you measure voltage. You typically measure voltage while things are plugged in and turned on, and that's how you measure voltage drop, is by making sure that the same voltage that's supplied to the battery gets to the load, to the bulb or to the resistor.